thank you very much for uh, coming this evening. Um, this is uh, the third seminar that I've done uh, with this format. Usually we're... So let me start by saying, first of all, we have these three speakers who are going to be speaking with us um, by video. Dr. Uh, Roberto Srosary is going to be discussing reimbursement issues. Uh, Daniela Chase is going to be discussing the German Health Innovation Fund, um, which until recently I never heard about, and it turns out in Germany a lot of people know about it uh, in the healthcare field. And then we'll uh, be hearing, not in this order actually, we'll be hearing from Barbara about market access to, of course, thank our sponsors. So first and foremost, Deloitte for hosting us. Thank you very much, Deloitte. Great facility. Also, first and foremost, because it's not second, um, thank you very much to the law firm of Cheski Achakmol. And we have five, I think, five representatives here this evening. Um, and they're in support of actually, we couldn't have had this event without them, so thank you very much. And then IATI, uh, you're probably all familiar with IATI, came in as a partner organization. It's a great honor, actually. I know, I've known this organization for a while, I have a great deal of respect for it. And uh, it was great that the CEO of the organization, Karine, uh, decided that this was something that's uh, very interesting to her and to her audience and decided to uh, partner with me as well. So let me give you a little bit of background just to begin with. I'm not the main uh, speaker here. Um, I brought in experts, but I would like to uh, give you just a little bit of background how we got here. So it didn't quite go back that far, uh, but I thought it was a, an interesting uh, picture. My career goes back in this field about 16 years. Um, I was in the States, I was in Atlanta at the time. I worked with an organization um, that promotes business between the Southeast, US, and Israel. And what happened was I came across a lot of Israeli high-tech companies uh, that needed to go into the US market, and I learned a lot about their challenges. Um, now, at the time, of course, uh, the Israeli companies uh, really didn't know the U.S. market, the high-tech side, didn't really know the U.S. market that well. There were quite a lot of companies here also that didn't last and make it. Uh, so the challenges are not all the same, but over the years you see that some challenges remain the same. And those challenges have to do with the gap between what the company has to offer and what the market will actually buy and how do they bridge that gap. So over, over the years, did I do a good job, by the way, with the sign and compass, making it look a little bit old? Try it. <laughs> Those are my relatives. That's me with the horse. Um, so over the years, by the way, in 2004, I came back to Israel, and then I started working with Israeli high-tech companies. And I worked with companies in different fields. Uh, so here are some examples of products that my company, my, my clients uh, sold. I worked in the cable TV space and in the IP multimedia subsystem space, which is software for core network of communication companies. Um, a very unique device that straightens teeth, a company called Aerodentis. Uh, network backup devices, these are all actually very unique uh, products and very unique companies in the world. The first one, by the way, is just a set-top box, but it relates to a company called Catch Media, which is very successful. Uh, this Y-Scan system is the company that I worked for for a number of years uh, in the biological uh, research space. And I found with all these companies and with others um, that there existed a, a gap between um, this great product that they had and how they would go into the market. And I won't go into it right now, but I can give you an example which I think you can all relate to. So if you look at um, a falafel stand, um, even there, even with a falafel stand, there's a gap between the product, the falafel, and the market, right? That lady was eating the falafel. There's so many falafel stands in Israel. I'm sure that those who run them don't, not each one of them actually thinks about all these different aspects, but they actually do it. They may not think. <laughs> they don't think about any of it. But first of all, it affects them, that's for sure. And some of them may actually do things, I'm sure they do things that relate to it, but they don't really realize it necessarily. So they all have to market themselves and advertise it some way. Uh, they have to engage the customer. If you go to a falafel stand and they don't treat you very nicely, you're probably not going to buy there or not go back there. So they have to know how to interact with you. Um, they have competition. They need to know who that competition is. They have to decide where to locate their stand relative to the competition. They better make sure they're, they have good product quality. Um, what options do they have? Different sauces, etc. Uh, how do you support a customer? You know, you drop the falafel ball. What do they do next? You're going to complain. You want another one. 
Uh, you want to add some salad, how do they deal with that? Customer support issues. And of course, repeat sales. If you don't do anything right, they're not going to come back and uh, you probably can't make a whole lot of money off of 15 shekel worth of a falafel. So these things are all things that affect companies in general. But when you go global, they just become a little bit more pronounced. Um, they're a little bit more uh, critical. Hello. Hello. Oh, good evening. How are you? Let me just increase the volume here. There we go. All right. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good, we can see you, I can, uh, you can see me. I'm going to actually shut off my video as we discuss. Okay. So you, can, uh, you won't see the... So just a German attitude, you are just in time. <laughs> <laughs> I have a clock right in front of me. I kept every, uh, so, looked at every minute. I don't want to bother you, but I just expected a five minute time delay, <laughs> at least. So shalom to you all, good evening. My name is Hubertus Rosere. I have the pleasure now to speak about the German reimbursement situation um, for you because this is just a scheme of the evening, at least one part of it today. I have prepared 10 slides with some figures uh, in order to explain the very detailed area around reimbursement in Germany as a whole. Next slide, please. This slide shows you a scheme I very often use when talking about reimbursement. Some of you, and I know some clients or some participants uh, in the room now are already connected with me, so apologize for repetition. This is, but anyway, this is very useful in order to explain requirements and future programs for your technology. So you have a row and you have a column. And the row and the column are connected with uh, yeah, re reimbursement hurdles in the row and in the column you have, um, let's say, evidence uh, yeah, instruments you may use. And the deeper you go in the row, the more the change is regarding used evidence. I will explain it a bit more, this figure here, before entering into each step milestone regarding reimbursement hurdles. So first of all, again, you have to solve the CE marking process in this case, 1A, 1B. Next slide, please. So now we have the payment uh, area, if I'm correct, Elan, for the inpatient. Uh, coding and patient with the uh, free... Uh, oh, let me see, I'm sorry for that. Oh, yes, uh, on your slide it says page 16. 16, payment inpatient, no. correct? Coding, coding inpatient. Did you mean payment inpatient? Yeah, so it's print, print. It's, it's just a figure with, with a chart, right? No, no, it's, uh, it says here ICD-10 and OPS on the left and then DRT. Ah, okay, I'm, now I remember. Okay, I can do that out of my mind. Sorry. Um, as I said, uh, each program has a DRG, a flat rate. And the flat rate is done uh, in a combination of procedural codes and indications. Sometimes when the procedure is very cost sensitive, the procedure wins, and sometimes when the disease is very complex, the disease wins. So one is a winner, the indication or the, um, uh, the, the procedure. And you see the logo here, DIMDI. DIMDI stands for the Deutsches Institut für Medizinische Dokumentation und Information. They are in charge for putting a new, especially procedural code into the system. And chronic patients, how do you locate them? Are they inpatient or outpatients? Chronic Which patients. Kind of patients. Because they combine both. Chronic patients. Chronic patients. Chronic diseases. It okay. depends on the disease. I mean, chronic, I may guess that they are very often part of the outpatient area because they have to be screened, they have to be observed. As long as they do not have an, an, an actual disease status uh, which requires hospital stay. Okay. For example, the dialysis would you consider them uh, inpatient or outpatient? Dialysis. Both. Dialysis. dialysis. Is a, it's a good question regarding uh, apheresis and dialysis. Uh, I have done a big presentation indeed, and I had to talk about both areas uh, for the hospital as well as for the outpatient area. And I mean, believe me, this is very, very complex. All right, so let's dive into Barbara. In uh, Hanover, right? 
Nuremberg. Yes. Nuremberg. Yes. Very well. It's cold and rainy. Cold. Cold. Oh, cold. cold and rainy. Yes. Oh, in Israel, it's hot and muggy. Sounds great. Also, maybe to say that for almost seven years now, I've been uh, working with companies entering the German market. And uh, I enjoy very much working with Israeli companies, especially. Uh, I appreciate the business culture and the uh, communication ways, uh, which I think also have a big potential. When, uh, work Today I will concentrate here on a couple of points which I see as important uh, for your success for the first step to take on the German market. To, to be considered that uh, German companies receive emails on a daily basis, uh, any emails from foreign companies trying to them products. So, um, let me share here the, the steps I take. Maybe this tip, this tips can help you and your uh, steps. First of all, a thorough. So these were just a couple of hints which uh, were in the time uh, suited here, and I, I hope they help you all with your uh, success on the junior market. I'm not mistaken. He's really expert as too. Can you maybe just uh, in a few words share what what kind or what level of activity do you see from Israel in Germany and how is it regarded by Germans, the German business community? Sure, sure. Uh, Israel has a very good status in Germany. So uh, when mentioned uh, about Israeli innovations uh, as, as the, most, uh, most, um, say the most important thing about Israel, about the Israel business, everybody knows Israel is the country of startups of innovations of uh, new interesting products. So to get the company interested in your product, it's always good to mention Israel. Some products are more suitable to go over small or regional distributors, but if you want to go with a mass product uh, on a big scale and a big, big quantity, you need to, to have a big, strong distributor behind you who is, uh, has good connections to the hospitals. Daniela Chase, and I'm a senior consultant at the Institute for Applied Health Services Research based in Berlin. And um, so my work is to write up proposals for the Innovation Fund and to conduct research, health services research. And throughout the last few weeks, I had the opportunity to dive into the Israeli healthcare system and understand what kind of data you use and what kind of um, electronic health records you used. And I just wanted to start off and tell you that I am truly impressed by the, the healthcare system you have and how it works. So I just wanted to tell you, as a researcher, I envy, I envy the, the healthcare system you have. It's great. Um, the German healthcare system, I'm, I'm aware that you know some things about it. And we have the same challenges as many healthcare systems do. We have more and more elderly people, and we have more and more chronically ill people. So we need to have innovations entering the system in order to improve the quality that we can care for those patients. We already have a pretty good system, but I want to make you aware that it can be better, but the German system sometimes is a little bit, um, it doesn't adapt to change very easily. And this is something I already told you in the beginning. I envy you for the electronic health records you have in Israel because we, for example, don't have any electronic health records. Um, so on some points, we lag behind. And I think right now is a perfect time that innovations enter the system because we have that wonderful big fund we can spend money. Um, and it is a big market that you could see on the right side of the of the slide in the gray box. We are spending hundreds of billions of euros every year on health ex expenditure. Over five million employees work in healthcare, and internationally by the OECD we were ranked number five for health spendings. That is 11.2 percent of our GDP. 
So the innovation fund, I think, can be seen as one tool to enter the German market, but it does not have to be the only tool. If you decide to um, work together with the German companies and to, to basically want to participate in the innovation fund, I think it's, I think you need to expect to spend some time in advance and also some money because it's not easy to get in. People expect you to come over, to talk to them, to explain what you're doing, and that of course just costs money and time. And the last point I just wanted to draw your attention to is that leadership of the consortium will probably always be on the side of the health insurance companies or of the healthcare providers. For example, big hospitals like the Charité here in Berlin. So companies like our company, the ENAF, the evaluator, or medtech companies will always be on the rear seat. We're not steering the consortium. And I just wanted to tell you that because I think it's part of the expectation management of what role you can play. In general, I'm just you know, very convinced that healthcare technology is part of the digitalization process and also part of the process to, to optimize care here in Germany. And it could be a long journey, we don't know that, but we can, it could also be a big impact on, on healthcare and the standard care here in Germany. And um, with this next slide, I would like to close my talk and I would like to thank you. I appreciate your time and your interest in the German healthcare system and wanting to enter it. And if there is anything I can, can do for you on a one-to-one -one basis, you're more than welcome to send Elon and me an email. Thank you very much. Very much, Daniela. Let me just uh, ask if there are any questions. Yeah, so let me turn the um, monitor around. documents that they actually give great help. Um, there is a web page that I'd be happy to send to you. I don't know if you have the backup slides, Ilan, or if it's worth going into them. I do. So slide number 11 is basically just a screenshot of what types of documents they will provide. Is that a question to me? Yeah. Yeah, I was just, uh, I said, other than this uh, seminar through which we're delivering the information now, how else are Israeli companies uh, exposed to this information about uh, the fund and, and how to access it? Is there a, a proactive effort that you're making in the Israeli market to get uh, the information to the Israelis? Um, so, you know, I'm not quite sure what the Innovation Commission and the Advisory Board do, but I'd be truly impressed if they did market it outside of, of Germany. Not because they do not because they don't want to have any international partners, but just because I think there is there's so much work to do for them within Germany. I I'm not sure if they really market it outside of Germany. Okay. Any other questions? I think we're good. Daniela, thank you very much. Thank you. Really appreciate your time. I appreciate the uh, very uh, thorough um, presentation. And uh, I'm sure that it, there'll probably be questions or companies that maybe want to reach out. And um, Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you for coming. I uh, hope this was valuable. Um, I know not every topic was valuable to every person, but uh, thank you for sticking through it. Um, you're welcome. You know, there's a little bit more food and drinks left. Um, Afterwards, we're going to play games here. Just kidding, no games. We can just enjoy the food. Um, we finished uh, about when we planned, so we're good. Five minutes early, so we're even better than the, the, the plan. 
And uh, thank you. Hopefully, uh, we can see you again.